During the exploration of Africa between 1500 to 1900, the world viewed Africa from different perspectives and relate to it accordingly. Here are five stories of those periods which you've never heard of. This is a picture of George Arigat. He was the sub-commissioner of Western Uganda province. He forces the local people to carry him on their heads from Fort Potter to Ibanda, refusing to let them rest. A tired Uganda named Rutaraka later spared him to death. Because of this, the colonial government sentenced two chiefs to death, but it was later cancelled by the British East African court. Gar's body was taken for burial, and colonial government made the natives make a pile of stones to cover the blood of Gar. The pile stones making a pyramid-like feature of 5 meters long and 3 meter high, which still stands till today. It is called the Pyramid of Gar. Till the time of making this video, at the mention of Africa, animals, that is what is likely to come into the mind of an average person living outside of Africa. This is so because Africa has many animals that cannot be found elsewhere on the planet. During the 15th century, some Chinese took a voyage to the East Africa and landed somewhere around the modern day Somalia. They were gifted giraffes, zebra, and oryx. When they returned to China, the animals were referred to as heavenly animals. The emperor himself went to the gates to receive them, where the palace officials congratulated him because the presence of the animal signals greatness of his powers, and they all bowed before the heavenly animals. If you schooled in Nigeria and you are not a school runaway type, you would have attended this class. Yes! Which one of you can tell me who discovered River Niger? Uncle is Mango Park. Can you give a round of applause? Mango Park was a Scottish explorer, which we were taught in school that he discovered River Niger that people were already fishing in many years before Europeans start coming into Africa. Is this to say Africans were fishing and getting water from the river to where their farms, and yet they can't see the river? This question might want to make you ask for a refund of your school fees. The truth about this expedition on the River Niger is that he was studying the route of the waters from a source to where it linked into the ocean to facilitate movement of raw materials taken from the land. But it became a mission impossible when his company was attacked at Busa while they were at the middle of the Niger River. He drowned in the river while he tried to escape the arrows that had been shot at him. When his son heard about his death, he didn't believe it and he insisted on going to Africa to find his father. But his story ended as a sad one because as soon as he got to Africa, he also died of malaria. This colorized photo was taken in Congo in 1955 under the Belgian colonial masters. In the photo, a Belgian father brought an African child in a bed cage for his children as an entertainment in their residence. The picture surfaced the internet after it was used as a book cover by a Belgian historian. The book was titled White Black in Black and White, Together and Yet Apart, Pictures and Stories from Belgian Congo. Africa is called the Dark Continent not because it is dominated by black-skinned people, but because explorers were not sure of what to find in it. Unlike the Americas, despite awareness of the African continent, it remained unexplored for a long period of time. Things that made it difficult to be explored include the largest desert in the world, the Sahara Desert. Also, as rivers of Africa approaches the sea, they form high waterfalls. As a result of this, rivers could not be used to travel in the interior of the continent. Until the 19th century, Europeans had little direct knowledge of Africa beyond the coast, though their maps were already filled with details about the continent.